Blair of the Mounties. We present episode 32 in the dramatic series Blair of the Mounties. Although the character names in the following story are entirely fictional, the story itself is largely founded on historical fact, a story of long-delayed justice. Officially, it is one of the few cases in which Inspector Blair failed to bring the author of a crime to justice. And yet, strangely enough, a case in which the final outcome brought him no regret. We present to you the disappearance of Alexander Pressman. Hello, Dr. Sherwood. You came up very quietly. No, you haven't had a strike for the last hour. The sun's getting too bright. I think I'll call it off till evening. Uh, yes, uh, I don't think you'll get very much till the sun drops a bit. That's why I came along. I want to have a talk. Indeed? <clears throat> Let's sit here in the shade a while. Good. I suppose you want to talk about this Pressman mystery. Eh? <laughs> ah, so you guessed uh, the real reason for my invitation, eh? Not a very difficult thing to guess, Doctor. Prominent man disappears under very strange circumstances. I get a sudden invitation for a week's fishing from a man I never met. It's fairly obvious. Yes, I suppose you're right. As a matter of fact, I rather expected you'd see through this scheme of mine. Well, uh, let's discuss the business question. Do I understand you wish me to act for you in this investigation? Yes, that was my idea. Apart from the fact that you were Mr. Pressman's physician, what is your connection with him? Well, that's a fair question. I'm his executor in case of death. I see. Now, the first thing is, will you undertake this job? Certainly. I'd be glad to do so. Excellent. Yes, now the case. You know the facts? I believe so. Mr. Pressman was a wealthy man. Rather eccentric. He lived in fear of an attack on his life, I understand. Yes, that is correct. Yes. He disappeared suddenly in broad daylight three weeks ago. Since then, not the slightest trace of him has been found by the police. Roughly speaking, that's all I know, Doctor. You have the main facts, but of course there are important details known to me. No doubt. Now a question or two, Doctor. What do you know of uh, Mr. Pressman's early life? He started life as a poor boy in New York. From there he went west, made money up in the Klondike. Hmm, now that's interesting. All right, go on, Doctor. From there he went to California, made a lot of money. His reputation was uh, not a good one, oh. but he was very successful. Five years ago, he retired and came to England. All right, now these threats against his life. Know anything about them? Latterly, yes. Pressman was, uh, or if he's still alive, I should say is, a very peculiar type. I don't think he had a real friend in the world. There was a strain of cruelty in his nature. I believe he delighted in other people's misery. Hmm, nice sort of chap. Yes. As regards his fear of enemies, he received a number of threatening letters. They started after his wife's death and arrived regularly every month. The local police have the letters. Anything special about them? They are composed of words clipped from newspapers. The strangest thing about them was that they all mentioned June 21st, the date of his marriage, and also the exact date of his disappearance. Mm, that's queer. Now, the details of this disappearance. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Pressman had a suite of rooms overlooking the park on the second floor of his house. The room has large French windows which open onto a stone balcony. How large is the balcony? Runs the full width of these private apartments. It's the only place Pressman ventured out to take exercise. Anybody with him at the time of his disappearance? Mm, not precisely. There was a man on guard in the passage outside the door of his suite and another out on the balcony with Pressman. Mm, he was pretty well guarded. Yes. The disappearance is rather dramatic. Pressman had gone out onto the balcony. He was chatting with his personal guard when the alarm bell rang inside the private apartments. The guard rushed into the apartments and found nothing there. When he got back to the terrace, Pressman had disappeared. That's the whole story, Inspector Blair. And not a trace of him since that moment, you say? Not the slightest. Oh, a very pretty case, Doctor. Now, uh, how about looking over the house? I can arrange that whenever you wish. The sooner the better. How about this afternoon? Certainly. I'll telephone to Lang, Mr. Pressman's private secretary. 
He'd be glad to show you around. Good. You'll come along, of course. Well, uh, if you think it necessary. I'd uh, much prefer it, Dr. Sherry. Very well, then. Suppose we run over to my house for lunch. And I'll drive you out to Stony Haven afterwards. That do? Excellent. Come along, then. Oh, yes, yes. oh, there's Lang. Oh, uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Lang, uh, I want you to meet my friend, Inspector Blair. How are you, Lang? How do you do, Inspector? What's this, a professional visit? Oh, you mean, uh, am I employed to inquire into the disappearance of Mr. Pressman? <laughs> well, since you put it so plainly, yes, uh, that's what I meant. No, I'm just a detective on vacation, interested, of course, in such an unusual disappearance. It certainly was unusual. Uh, want to look around? Yes, if you don't mind. I suppose that's the balcony yonder that you spoke of, Doctor. Yes, that's it. No way to get to it except through the private room? None whatever. It's a 30-foot drop. And there were people working in the grounds. Gardeners and so on. I see. Can I have a look at that, uh, well, at those rooms? Well, sure thing. Uh, right this way. Thanks. This way, Inspector. You see, the window leads directly out to the terrace. I see. How about this alarm that went off just before the disappearance? Was that uh, accounted for? Well, no. It was quite a puzzle. The rooms are wired. The alarm went off a couple of times before by accident. But the puzzle is, why did it sound just at that particular time? It was checked, of course. Yes, the police checked it over. Nothing wrong with it. Just went off, that's all. And within a minute of that alarm sounding, Mr. Pressman was gone. Within a few seconds, I should say. Simmons, the man on guard, uh, hardly waited a moment inside, make sure that there was nothing wrong. Then he rushed back, and the chief had disappeared. Ah. There are three dimensions here, of course. A man would have to go somewhere, either down over the balcony... Out through the rooms or up on the roof? And all three equally impossible. Two of them, yes. But how about that roof? That was nearly the first thing that we thought of. But it couldn't be. There were workmen on the roof, mending the bricks in the chimney. Which chimney? Well, you can see the top of it here, the big one uh, over there to the left. Oh, yes. Yes, I see the new bricks. Yes, they acted according to instructions. Whose instructions? Well, Mr. Pressman's. The chimney was dangerous. He wanted it very strongly reinforced. I see. What's on the other side of this house? Nothing but the cliff. A sheer drop of over a hundred feet to the sea. Any beach at the foot of the cliffs? Mm, practically none. There's no chance for anyone to get up the cliff. Mr. Pressman liked the place for that reason. Boats hardly ever come in there. No. That's a mystery, sure enough. And the police never got a single clue. Not a thing. Anything else you'd like to see? No, after all, it's no business of mine. I'm afraid I was rather inquisitive. Matter of habit, I suppose. Oh, that's all right. Uh, come and see us again sometime. Thanks. Well, Doctor, let's get along. All right. Goodbye, Lang. Glad we met you. Goodbye, Inspector. Goodbye, Lang. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, Blair, did you see anything interesting? No, can't say I did, although I'm interested in that fellow Lang. I rather like him. Yes, he's not the kind of man you'd suspect of any crooked work. Oh, no, he's not the criminal type. But he strikes me as the sort of man who'd pay his debts. Oh, 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 yes, yes. Lang's a very honourable sort of chap. What next, Inspector? I think I'll get you to run me back to the hotel. I want to go up to London. To London? Yes. Not a sudden decision, isn't it? Yes. I'll be back probably tomorrow. There are one or two things connected with the story you told me of Pressman's life that I'd like to check up. Right. Then we'll get along. All right. Inspector Blair? Ah, oh, good evening, Lang. Very good of you to come. Uh, Dr. Sherwood is dining with me, too. Mm, that's all? Good. Yes, he'll be here later. I asked you to come half an hour early because I want to have a little talk with you. Why, oh, yes, uh, certainly. It's about the Pressman case. Oh, uh, still interested in that disappearance? Yes, still interested. But mm. my interest in the case is nearly over. It's going to end in about uh, half an hour. What? Oh, never mind that. Lang, you're a Canadian, aren't you? Eh? Well, yes. Well, strictly speaking, I am. Although I was brought up in the States. I thought so. You were born in uh, Dawson City in 1900. Why? Well, what of it? Nothing. I remember the day well. A bitter cold day in spring. The ice just starting to move in the Yukon River. You? You were there? Yes, I was there. I knew your father well. He was a good friend of mine. But his name wasn't Lang. See here, Inspector. I don't know what you're after, but... Better sit still, Lang. I mean you no harm. This is a public place. You'd better listen to what I have to say. All right. 
Your father had a partner named Pressman. He had a bad name in Dawson. I'll say he had. Your father was killed in a slide on the old Cinderella claims. They never found his body. Pressman was blamed, but there was no evidence against him. None that would hold in court. That's right, but he was guilty just the same. Yes, I think so too. You do? I don't understand. What is it you want? Not what you think. But I'd just like to tell you an interesting theory. Well, go ahead. This man Pressman double-crossed every partner he ever had. Three men in particular, your father and two others. Each of these men had a son. These three boys were close friends. There was you, John Leeson, and Clyde Musgrove. That's right. What held these three together was a sort of a pact that they formed in childhood. That someday they'd pay the family debt to Pressman. That's a guess, isn't it? Well, call it a guess. Leeson is a contracting engineer. Musgrove is an architect. Both of these men were in London just before the Pressman disappearance. And you were down here. Isn't that so? So far, it's all quite true. Good. Now let's come to the day of Pressman's disappearance. There are two workmen on the roof. Pretty good workmen, too. One an engineer, the other an architect. Pressman was particular. Wanted good men on those repairs. That's what you got for him. You can't prove that. No, just a guess. The alarm went off in Pressman's room. That was easy. The guard rushed inside. And a noose dropped over Pressman's head from above. Oh, what's the use of going any further, Inspector? Hold on now, young fellow. Don't be impatient. I'm just in the middle of my theory. Pressman was jerked up over the roof in a matter of seconds. There was a block and tackle rigged on the chimney. They swung him out over the other side and dropped him over the cliff. What do you expect me to say? Nothing. I'm uh, anxious over one little point, though. What's that? You see, for a perfect crime, the body has to be disposed of properly. Now, if it was picked up later and dropped into deep water with weights attached, I should feel that it was a perfect job and that our friend uh, Pressman would never be found. Don't worry. Good. One likes to be sure of these little matters. Well, here's our friend, Dr. Sherwood. Uh, hello, Blair. Hello, hello, Doctor. Uh, hope I'm not late. Sir. No, you're just in time. And, by the way, Doctor... Lang and I have been going over the details of the disappearance. Uh, I've come to a definite conclusion. And that is? Uh, that Mr. Pressman will never be found. Hmm. Well, glad to have your opinion, Inspector. You have listened to, to another episode in Blair of the Mountains.